let's take a look at doing your first audio recording in Cubase. In this example, we're going to be using Cubase LE. The first thing we want to do is to define which audio interface is being used to record our instruments or voices. We could go to our device setup from the devices menu, go to the VST audio system on the left hand side, and for our ASIO driver, we want to select your audio interface. I'm going to choose my Steinberg UR44. Selecting the Steinberg UR44 from the drop down list allows us to access some other functions, including the control panel. Here we could adjust the buffer size. And we'll take a look at this a little bit later in application, but the lower the buffer size is the smaller the latency, which is ideal for doing critical recording, and but it's harder for the computer processor. The larger the buffer size, it's easier for the computer to handle. So some people may record at lower latencies and mix at higher latencies. I'll just leave it at a 1024 sample buffer and then we'll kind of show why that's important in just a little bit. One other critical thing that we see here available is direct monitoring. So not every audio interface offers this, but we're just gonna be aware that it's gonna be found right here, and we'll take a look at why we want to use that in a little bit. So we've defined which audio interface and our buffer size from our device setup. Now we need to define which connections or which inputs and outputs of that audio interface we're gonna to use to connect our particular instruments. And this is done by going to your VST connections or by hitting F4. We can see an input and an output source. Now by default, we see a stereo in and a stereo out. And we could add other connections. So if I wanted to add a mono source, or stereo source, I could add my mono input and I could choose any of my six inputs that I have available on my UR44. So we can select any of the physical connections on your audio interface for inputs for mono or stereo. So at this point, we've defined our inputs and we can also again look at our outputs and our outputs is where we're going to set the cables to go to our monitoring system, either into a mixer or a lot of people will go directly into powered speakers. So now we've defined what audio device we're using in a device setup. Our VST connections will define which inputs we want to do. And now we want to actually define our project and where the files will be saved. So if we go to new project from our file menu, there are a number of different starting off templates, which are really handy, which will have plugins loaded up and are pre-configured, but I'm just gonna choose an empty setting here. Now, as I do this, I could choose empty. One thing to be very aware of is we could think of you want each folder, you're, you want each project in to be in its own independent folder. So by default, this will go directly into the documents folder on your Mac or Windows. But if you wanted to manually set the folder, you can just click right here. And then when you go to create, it will ask you to, with a standard operating system file dialog box, to define a folder. So think of each project as having its own folder. So I'm going to come here and we'll just create. And what I want to do is I'm going to add right click in this column here. We have our track column. I'm going to right click or control click on Mac if you have a single mouse button. And then we want to add an audio track. I'm going to record an electric bass. So I want to come right here. We're going to choose it as a mono source. If I was recording a keyboard, I would probably choose stereo. And at this point, we're going to add the track. Now, the track will immediately come up and be record enabled, but we may not be able to hear the signal until monitoring is turned on. And this could be turned on directly by clicking on this button. Now there's a couple preferences that could be handy if you don't want to have to enable monitoring for every single track. One of them is by going into the preferences to VST, and I like to set my monitoring style to tape machine style. 
So we've done that. So we've now record enabled the track and we've monitored the track. But one thing that's very important is we see that by default, this track will be called audio zero one. We want to name the audio track here. And that way, this name that we've defined is going to be applied to the audio file itself. Here, we can see our inspector. And by default, we'll see this view here. We can set our input directly from the inspector. I'm plugged into input one, which is defined as the left channel of my first stereo input here. So even though it's a stereo input, I could still use one single input connection. So I'm going to set my left input here. And now when I play my bass, now as I've listened to this, I could set the level on my audio interface. Now the one thing that is a little odd to me, and you may notice is, it sounds like there's a bit of a delay on the recording. So again, we'll go back to our device setup, and then I want to turn on direct monitoring directly there and hit OK. So now when I play, so now our latency is gone away. So basically the signal is passing directly from the input to the output. So, and again, depending on how much of that delay is set by the buffer size that's been defined here. So if I wanted minimal input or output latency, I could set that. Or if your audio interface has direct monitoring features like the UR44, I would just enable the direct monitoring. Now to actually record a track, we see the transport bar here. So let's say I wanted to start to play. Now, if you wanted to have the metronome or the click on or off, you could hit the letter C on a computer keyboard or just turn this icon on directly from the transport. Let's say I wanted to do my recording. I could come here and just hit the record enable button. Let's turn on my click track. I'll undo that. Let's rewind to the beginning. And now we could rewind, hit play. And we have our recording. And if I wanted to colorize the track, I could click directly here and choose the track color. So as you can see, following a couple of steps, it's very easy to do your very first recording. If you found this video useful, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel.